Hi, my name is Kylie Fawcett. I'm a student at Bridgeport Regional Aquaculture Science and Technology Education Center. I wanted to go into science and come to this school because science offers so many different career opportunities for students and for adults alike. I can be a doctor, I can go into being an engineer, there's really so many different possibilities. So today we're going to be using the HPLC sold by Buck Scientific to identify the caffeine peak in coffee, tea, diet soda, and regular soda. So first and foremost, we're going to start with sample prep. In order to identify that there is indeed caffeine in the coffee, we need to run a pure sample of caffeine. To use this, we have a pure sample of caffeine right here. I took a small amount of this, put it in my motor and pestle, grinded it up so that it will dissolve faster. I took a very small amount of this and put it into um, about three milliliters of mobile phase, which is used in the instrument. Using a pipette, I mix it up so that it will dissolve fully. That brings us to what I, where I am right now. To ensure it's high quality enough to run through the instrument, we're going to filter it. We can use a three milliliter syringe and the filtering pads. First step first, is to fill the syringe with the caffeine and mobile phase mixture. Uh, for the HPLC, you only need a small amount. So you really need to only get about one and one, or to one and a half milliliters. Next, you attach the filter and start pushing it through into a new test tube. Once you filter it, it's important to cover it right away to keep that pureness and high quality you just gave it. So now we have our pure standard to compare the other samples against. Next, we're going to compare, uh, prepare the samples for the ca coffee. Here we have an old sample and a new sample. So to ensure that we will be able to compare it, we have both. So what we're doing is making a 20% dilution. So I took four milliliters of the mobile phase which we got from the instrument, and combined it with one milliliter, milliliter of the coffee. We put this into here, shake it to combine it, and then transfer it to a test tube, which I have here. Next, we repeat the procedure of filtering it through the filter pad and covering it quickly. After that, I have my pure sample of caffeine and then my two samples of coffee. After preparing the samples, we can come over to the HPLC. The HPLC is actually a collection of many different devices. Up here we have the mobile phase. This is what's being pumped through the entire system and what will carry uh, whatever we inject through the instrument. Next we have the data system collector. This processes all the data. Down here we have the pump, which is pumping the liquid through and the injection port, where we put the sample into. Then we have the UV Viz detector, which analyzes the solution, and the refractive index detector over here. So now we're going to inject our pure caffeine into the system. You take the test tube, and you can uncap it. There is a 100 microliter syringe you take. You can put this into the test tube, try to avoid having it touch the bottom, and you're going to push it out first to release all the air, and you're going to pull it in. You want to do this a few times just to wet the inside and to ensure that there's no bubbles captured in the syringe. Once you ensure there's no bubbles, you can fill it up to the 100 microliters, make sure the injection port is on the load position, and you can inject it in. To 
To ensure the ejection port is full, you can inject it two to three times. Next, it's important to separate it and put it to side so you can clean it later. So next, we're going to run it through the system. In order to do this, you go over to the first box, you press auto zero, go to the second box and you hit auto zero. You switch the load position to the inject position and you go over to the computer and hit auto zero and auto zero. It's the zero button in between the magnifying glasses. This scan is going to take anywhere between two to five minutes while we wait for the main peak to come out. During this time, you can take the syringe used to inject the pure caffeine into the sample and rinse it out with the mobile phase. After about five minutes, it's very important you switch this back to the load position so you're ready for the next sample. When each of the detectors has returned to the baseline and is no longer rising, you can go to acquisition and stop. This will stop the instrument and complete the scan. After the run of the caffeine, the experiment was continued with a run of the tea, diet soda, soda, and a pure caffeine. After each uh, sample was analyzed, we printed the graphs, so now we can analyze to see if there is indeed caffeine in each sample. In the coffee, we found there was a peak at 3.13. In the tea, the peak occurred at 3.13 again. In the soda, the peak occurred at 3.13. And then finally, the diet soda had a peak of 3.130. So same as all of them. To identify this was indeed the caffeine, a pure sample of caffeine was run. The single peak occurred at 3.123. Although this is a little bit different than the ones we ran, we can successfully identify that it was caffeine in the other samples. So thank you for watching. This will conclude our experiment. Once again, this was determining caffeine in coffee, tea, diet soda, and regular soda using a Buck Scientific HPLC. So in order to run the sample, when injecting, the position always has to be on load. Occasionally, a common mistake students make is by having this still be an inject. If this is inject and students add the sample, that causes problems. At least that's what we think. Luckily, we have John Miller here today, production manager of Buck Scientific. John, what would happen if we inject our sample while it's in the inject position? Actually, nothing. Okay. What happens is the contents of the syringe simply go through the waste tubing of the valve. So, to correct the mistake, Move the injector back to the load position, refill your syringe, put in your sample, and then inject it. Okay, perfect. Good to know. Thank you, John.